Hi, I'm Prasant, born and raised in Pokhara, Nepal, here to talk to you about an for security mentorship program. If you're too excited about us uh, being Gazabar, we're not that yet. Uh, in, instead, we are uh, Gazabar. The names come from the name comes from uh, the locking mechanism into old traditional houses. That's the middle wooden bar. There, that's the Gaza bar. And I'll be talking about the specifics of the program a little bit, and then we'll end with talking the macro picture of what trips, tips and tricks you can take from us if you're trying to run a mentorship program of your own. So let's get into it. So this is in 2020, January. This is be before I'm aware that Fredcon exists. But this is after, in 2012, uh, I had a company with my few friends. Uh, we called the company Bwingle, another Nepali word. Uh, and the company was a software engineering company. We worked mostly with WordPress. We talked around, found people who wanted websites and blogs and blogs and we made it for them with WordPress. The, our company eventually got hacked, defaced, bankrupt, and the people who were running the company went abroad for studies. So the company is in the thing anymore. But what I have retained from the time is uh, my affection for the WordPress community. Mostly because that's the community of developers that has succeeded. It's something I felt. So I tend to look up to them. Uh, and in 2020 January, they announced WordCamp Bootwall. Uh, it was also one of my friends was in the organizing team, so I was following it closely. So I was looking forward to it. And then they announced the first speaker. Roughly the same, good looking, <laughs> male, um, young to middle aged. And then they announced the second speaker, and the third one, and the fourth one and the fifth one, and then this went on for 18 more speakers, like a total of 18. Uh, and then there was somebody else who did not fit that profile quite well. So I knew my friend had been into diversity and inclusion for a while, so I wrote to them, hey, what's, what's happening? Why is there so many Chris Hemsworth giving the talk at the work camp and not, you know, not somebody else maybe? And the reasoning that came back was, uh, they had sent out a call for papers, that's called for uh, speakers, and all the ones who applied were roughly homogeneous. They just didn't have more applications from a more diverse pool. On the outside, it kind of sounded like a good logic, but something that did not sit well with me was this was a community of people that had run companies and organizations for a few years. So it felt to me like if they had wanted to make the pool a bit more diverse, they would have picked somebody, taught them what to do, and that could have looked different. So this was January 2020. In February 2020, I talked to a few more friends, uh, asked them if we could be more intentional about the skill set that's out there, what skill set is needed to be you know, uplifted a bit, and then if they would be into that kind of you know, intentional vision for uh, mentoring people. Uh, that was February. Uh, by the end of February, we had found a name for ourselves. That's uh, 2020, February 21st. Later the same day, we started making first commits to our work. And then after we had kind of selected a team and uh, committed to the work, the next step was deciding what kind of people we wanted to work with. Uh, and this went into designing our application. Here, the first thing we wanted to see in our applicants was uh, somebody who valued learning. The way I got into cybersecurity was uh, one day in college. My professor just asked me to come hang out with their team over the weekend. Uh, it was a CTF, and the team was mostly professors, postdocs, PhD students, seniors. And then in the first hour I was there, I somehow managed to find one question and solve it. And that was a huge kick for me. I kind of got high on it. It was a very simple question. And looking back, I think it was intentional. Um, it was a base 64 encoding problem. So there was nothing special about it, but I wasn't familiar with it. 
So, and uh, everybody else was expert, so they went on to harder questions, left the, you know, five pointers to me. Over the hour, I figured it out, felt really good about it. Um, and we wanted to see if there are people out there who, who know that what that high is. And we wanted to find them to, to come work with us. And if not, we wanted to let them experience that high. Uh, that's another question. Uh, this is uh, us encouraging a process of learning, trying to communicate that um, you're going to forget things over time. So it's important to, to retain it. And when we, when we put our effort into you, we want to know how long you're going to retain it for and how much. We're also just very curious about what notes look for people and how they learn. Um, there are a couple more questions. And honestly, we're not really too invested in reading the answers to these. So these are most to, more to set the vibe for us as a mentorship program. We kind of give you some resources. Uh, we tell you what we know. And then we kind of want to know what you got out of it. Talk to us. Uh, more things, just to warm you up for the feel of the program. And we also ask an op optional question for what is something you've always wanted to learn but never figured out. And sometimes that makes for very good interview questions to talk about, topics to talk about. Um, so after we have the application, now we have the team, we have an infrastructure, we have an application for what kind of people we want to attract to come work with us. And then the next was sending the word out. Our initial plan was to have uh, three mentees for three months, June, July, August. That's summer for me, so I'm usually free and can dedicate more time. Um, I was away, so it was going to be remote. And we also wanted to make it sponsored. And saying our program is sponsored has been one of the most difficult things to communicate effectively to the public audience. Um, so uh, this sponsor comes out of a couple experiences. Back in 2013, I was interning at one of the reputed companies in Kathmandu. I worked there for a month. And at the, month, at the end of the month, I paid for my own lunch. Not a great experience. And that was the experience we wanted to avoid for people who wanted to come work with us. So we said, hey, we're going to pay for you. Um, I had about $1,000 in my pocket at the time. And from my experience learning in Nepal and you know, charging Mero Mobile with um, all the 4G internet just so that I can use the internet, I figured it would roughly come around to $100 per month. Three months, $300, three people, $1,000, roughly evens out. Um, and the thing that got miscommunicated was when I said we sponsored $300, I got a few messages that said, hey, $300 is a bit much for a Nepali student. And I said, maybe, but what do we do? Um, and then they said, lower it down. And I said, well, I think you're going to need that much. And then it went back and forth for a while until the person eventually realized that we are paying them and they are not paying us. Um, this, this has been like a huge mental leap. Uh, mostly people do understand what it means to be free. Uh, so we usually communicate, okay, our program is free. And when they come, then we talk about, you know, if there's any need for any sponsorship, any subscriptions, we'll cover it for you. Uh, normally when we say that, they ask, is there a catch? Are you going to make us work in the projects that we don't want to work in later on? Uh, do I have to work, in, work for you for the next year? Um, do you get money from like other international organizations and profit from it? But normally there's no cats. And then the next question is, if there's no cats, why do you do this? And the answer is, we're just that kind of people. We like doing this. Um, and actually, we're pretty proud of the posters and all the uh, promotional materials we make. This is kind of team effort. Every January, we sit down and you know, everybody talks about how we want to represent ourselves over to the public. And you know, we send it out to our public community and get feedback on if they think it's a good poster or not. And it's fun. I'm going to show you a couple more. That's our poster for 2021. And um, this is our poster for 2022. Uh, we're, again, proud of this one because we started by kind of an imagined silhouette of what a person who worked with us would look like. And these are real people. Uh, in fact, you've met two of them today if you've been by our booth today. Uh, they volunteer their time with us, their effort with us, and they're on their, out of their own will. 
Uh, so that's been fun. Um, okay, the application is done. You know, we have a team, we have some work put in, we have the application. So what do we do next? So we figured maybe writing is not everybody's forte. Maybe not everybody can express themselves in writing. Um, so let's talk to them. Maybe they can talk better. And if we are leaving, missing out on uh, good applicants because they can't write well, then we can talk to them, make them, make them feel more comfortable. Um, so these are my actual interview notes from 2020 on how I wanted the interview to go, just the outlines. Our interviews can last from a few minutes to an hour, uh, depending on how much work applicants have put into the application. Uh, it's fairly common that somebody comes to us and then talks to us about a technical challenge they've been facing somewhere, and we just sit down there and start googling things, and we start looking at Stack Overflow, and just see what they need. Um, this is also, the interviews are also an opportunity for us uh, to kind of get out of the classroom mentality. A lot of our applicants, actually 100% of our applicants are students here in Nepal. And they tend to ask, so what do you teach? What can I learn from you? Uh, like, what's your curriculum? And this is an opportunity for us to flip the question and ask them, what do you want to learn? Because we're not in the business of, you know, teaching you a book. We're kind of in the mentorship where you tell us what you've been stuck on. You tell us what you want to learn. And we're going to do our best to find you, res you resources to, to get you unstuck on the things that matter to you. It's, this is not about what matters to us. This is about what matters to you. The interview has also been critical in terms of setting vision for our program. Uh, if you remember the posters from our first year, we wanted to do three mentees. Uh, we wanted to make it sponsored, and we wanted to make it remote. Turns out the sponsor was not only miscommunicated, it was also unnecessary. Once we started talking to the applicants, not a lot of them were, when we started talking about their problems, they, they didn't really have problems about, hey, I can't pay for this and I can't pay for that. That, that wasn't the main thing that came up. The main thing that came up was, so we're about 15, 20 applicants. Uh, you're taking three. So if we do not get selected, can we still have access to your recordings? Are you going to record your sessions and can we have access to that later? Can we learn from you? If we have a syllabus, uh, can we get that syllabus later from you and we still learn on our own? So there was a lot of interest in just being a part of it, but not a lot of interest in just, you know, hey, we're stuck because we don't have the money, please give us the money. So we decided maybe three mentees was not the right way to go. If there's so much interest in the community and there's just a community that just wants to be part of you and learn from you, let's just open it up to everybody. So that's what we did. Um, we just said yes to everybody. So we're going to make our every, all the lectures open, we're going to make all our syllabus open and We'll see how much you get from us, and ping us if you need more. Uh, right. So now we have the team, we have the work done, we have the applications, we have the interviews taken. We've sent our decisions to everybody saying, hey, you're all accepted. Welcome to the community. So the next step is what do we actually do now that the people are there? Uh, so this is normally the curriculum we tend to go through. This is mostly for beginners. Uh, Turns out a lot of us here in Nepal are kind of beginners when it comes to cybersecurity. Um, so we started Bandit. It's, uh, it's a lab that makes you familiar with, these are all Google level things by the way, but I'll explain a few things anyway. Uh, the Bandit makes you familiar with Linux environment. I particularly love the over the wire Red Tiger one. It's a SQL indexing lab. And um, I mean SQL in itself is not too heavy on uh, syntax. But it allows us to teach a few mindsets that we want to teach our mentees. Uh, they learn how to poke at the system. They learn to look for unintended functionalities. They learn to look for unintended consequences of the intended functionalities. But the thing that I love the most about it is it really teaches you to log the errors. Um, a lot of the students who have been educated in Nepal and come to us, they come to us really disliking or even hating errors. They want to build things, and when they see errors, they panic, they just don't like it, they want to find the first answers to it. And this is a lab where we get to say, hey, errors are good. You know, there's an application out there, and when it crashes, it's good for you. You're trying to test it where it crashes, and we, we want to find it. Uh, so we really get to flip that mindset a little bit, you know, of, you know, just making things work smoothly to say, 
there's, there's what's intended and that's what happens. And usually the gap between those two is the errors that you get in the meantime. So I tend to get really excited about the Red Tiger Lab. Uh, there's Matas Lab, that's mostly for um, just uh, learning web stuff, web security. There's CryptoPals, we like it because it really helps you define your uh, programming skills. And then we do Advent of Cyber. Uh, it's the Try Hackney Challenge for 25 days over Christmas. And they cover a whole range of topics. Um, and that gives you good breadth that we can't offer always. Uh, and then by this time we decide, you know, you're roughly, you wet your feet and it's time to kind of test you out. So we go out and do a few CDFs together, have fun, solve problems, and learn from each other. Uh, something else we've been doing consistently is uh, National Cyber League. Uh, it's designed for US high school students. But if you have uh, an internet connection and somebody who will pay about $35 for you, uh, there's nothing preventing you from joining it. And they have this nice format where they um, have a gymnasium that's open for four months. Uh, you get questions and you get solutions and the process. So you get to learn. And then there's the individual event where you get to flex what you just learned. And there's the team event where you get to learn to work with each other. So it's kind of a full mentorship package on its own. And we've been sponsoring students for that particular platform uh, consistently. After most of them, most of the students who do it are the ones who kind of stay with us through the summer. And then there are a few extra things that we do. Uh, there's a bunch of labs, uh, Burp Suit Academy, Pendestal Labs, you, know, you can look at them, they're all Google-able. Um, outside of that, something that we do is we kind of monitor the online forums a little bit. And then every now and then there's a new initiative coming in, hey, we want to open this kind of community, this sub-community, and we tend to kind of just jump in and say, hey, let us sponsor a couple of things for you, let us support you. Um, and then when we found out that we're coming to Tretcon, we also wanted to celebrate. And there was a decent interest over online communities to come in Tretcon, so we sponsored a few tickets as well. Um, so how does the internals look like? So, you know, we've walked through all the individual stages, so once we have the people coming in, once they're ready to work, how do we actually do it? Um, we do it over this bunch of uh, really interesting cutting edge free software. <laughs> uh, we started Google Calendar. Usually uh, whoever fills in the application gives us their email. We send out an invite to everybody. Uh, in the meantime, the mentors prepare. You come over a Zoom session. We cover, we've selected one topic for that Zoom session. It goes from one hour to two hours. We cover the topic. And at the end of the Zoom session, we assign more labs on the same topic. So you can practice what you learned. We provide support over Discord. You can ping any of the mentors. You can talk to us. You can you know, just talk to us and get help. And in return, what we ask is, this relates to the, the notes question that we asked earlier, that we ask that you submit your write-ups uh, so that we get to keep track of your progress as well. Eventually, somebody who has done the lab before you will go over the the write-up you submitted, approve it, and once it's approved, the cycle for that week's uh, content is complete. Um, so what's the outcome? So we did all of these things, right? Are we making any changes? Are we not making any changes? What's the, what's the outcome? So these are just community feedback. Uh, that's somebody complimenting us on the community we built. Uh, that's somebody complimenting us on actually listening to them and tailoring our mentorship to their needs. That is somebody complimenting us on making their learning easy and just accelerating the process. Something that will take them months, we make them take the sort of. Um, there's also something that I haven't really seen on the testimonials, but every now and then it so happens that somebody gets on a call with us. Like they write to us about this problem they haven't been able to solve. They got on a call, they get on a call with us, and then they start ranting. And they talk about, and that's kind of the moment it feels like what we're there for. You know, just rant with us about a topic that you can figure out uh, in a language that you can connect with. Um, so by the numbers, uh, in the last three years, we've had a total of 75 applications come through us. 100% uh, have, have been accepted. We never said no to somebody who came to us with, um, for help. Um, about 15 of the mentees have completed the all the labs we've assigned to them over the three months. That should be about roughly 12 labs, one per week. And uh, we have excluded the 2020. The completion does not involve 2022. 
because every year we allow people until the next application cycle to finish their labs and apply for a certificate of completion. Uh, so we don't take responsibility for finding jobs for students. We've sort, sort of so far just focused on learning and what you can learn from us. So we don't really take credits for um, you know who found the job and where, but we're kind of proud that at least seven, and we made a couple of, um, I mean, today is an emotional day because we started during the COVID times and it was all remote and we never met, and today we met about 15 of our uh, Gaza is today here at the venue for the very first time. And the number has gone up, uh, so it's more than seven. But we know that at least seven of the mentees who went through our programs have been working on cybersecurity roles actively in the Carpenter Valley, as we know of today. Um, so what does it cost? What does it cost to get all of this going? It takes about roughly 160 mentor hours per year. Um, it takes, it involves sort of designing all the posters we talked about, uh, reading through the applications, uh, giving feedback, uh, preparing for the labs, um, taking the write-ups to approve of them. It's an, it's an understatement, but you know, that roughly, roughly makes up for it. Uh, we also do office hours. And office hours are normally, if you're working in your labs, and during that week, between the old lab and the new lab, something doesn't work out, you can always just ping us, talk to us, and there's always like a time slot where you can just get a one-on-one -on -one feedback on what you're doing, and somebody will sit down with you and, and try to solve your problems. And even if you are using the non-intended path, you know, we'll, we'll try to work with your process of thought. Um, it takes about $250 per year to run this program. Most of the software stack we use is free. Uh, except for we renew our DNS uh, every year, and the rest of the money goes for subscriptions like somebody wants, has finished all the free rooms in TriHackMe and want to try, try the premium rooms now, or somebody wants to the hack the box, or people doing uh, the National Cyber League, as we talked about earlier. Uh, we also have some servers running, so that you know, if you want to try out, test out a few servers and attack them, you can uh, do it just through the servers we have. All right, so what's the future for the program? Uh, are we gonna do the same thing for the, the rest of eternity or are we gonna change the programs a bit? Uh, something we've been looking forward to doing is uh, more of the certification mentorship. So over the last three years, we now have a stable foundation of people who have shown their dedication, who have covered the fundamentals, and there will be, it would be nice to have a way of verifying that they know things other than the certificate of completion from us. We're not that, well recognized, but there are certifications that are, and it would be nice to support students uh, get them. Um, I personally recently finished the OSCP labs, and I'm really looking forward to um, talking to other people who are doing it. So maybe I'll get to connect to the hashtag threatcon 2022 winner today and talk about the OSCP certifications. We also have among our mentors, we have also people who've gone through CEFs and CRTP and have successfully completed them. And the next is funding. Um, so far the funding from, for this entire operation comes from an, a single individual who is not particularly well off. Uh, so it will be nice to kind of talk to companies around here, see what they need, you know, what's the skill set that they want in the market and see if we can cater to those needs from the mentorship that we have. It would be nice to kind of have the students come in, teach them a certain set of skills that we know are going to be valuable, and then send them off to the doors of the companies where they can at least, you know, have a good time walking to the door and feeling confident about what they know. Uh, something else that we've been looking for is like an anti-harassment module, like an online thing that we can complete. We started online, we've been running online, uh, we do everything online, and we encourage people to talk to each other. But we have no other training material to give to people uh, for how to talk to each other over online communities than just saying, hey, be decent. Um, it would be really nice to be able to you know, find something that's more locally grounded on how people interact with each other here that's more uh, reason appropriate. And then make it a requirement for everybody who comes into our program. All right, that covers the past, the present, and the future of Gazabar. Uh, but maybe some of you here are not for what we do, but for what you want to do, and for you, know, you trying to run your mentorship and help others. 
with your programs. So what are the lessons you can take away from us uh, and have it uh, be a more smooth experience for your mentorships? Define the scope. Uh, students come in to us with all sorts of different needs. And th there are quite a few needs. So as soon as you talk about a mentorship, any student who comes to you is very likely to talk to you about, hey, can you help us apply abroad? Is your program going to help us with the application abroad? Um, another thing is career counseling. Hey, can you find, help us find jobs? Uh, we really need a job. I'm about to graduate. Can you help us with it? And then there's somebody, you know, there's always going to be somebody who wants to come to you, learn how to develop websites, learn how to develop mobile apps, how to apply machine learning, artificial intelligence. Um, so far, we steer, steer clear of all of these, uh, but there's a need for all of it. And if you want to run your mentorship on any of these topics, uh, I think it would be great. Um, expect a wide range of uh, expertise. It's not uncommon to find a student who is in their final year who's never SSSed into a remote computer, or has never used a Linux environment, or you know, has never right-clicked and seen what the inspect element button does on a web page. Um, so, so prepare for these. Uh, they're going to be, I mean, of course, there are always people who are going to be doing good and well in life, and they're fine on their own. But there's going to be a variety of, like, a range of people who come to you. And fortunately, for in our experience, it doesn't matter what they know. Um, what matters is how well they fill out the applications. Uh, it's not always the people who know the best, like who know the most, that do well in our program. It's the people who kind of spend the time to write a well thought out application. Um, yeah, just look out for people who are just dedicated, and they will do better. Uh, have one-on-one -on -one interview. Uh, like I said, our interviews run from a few minutes to an hour, and that has been a marker of how engaged an individual is with, with the program throughout. If the first interview goes well, they're going to speak up. During the Zoom sessions, they're going to write to you when they have problems. They're going to seek your advice. And if the first interview does not go well, if you just rust, you know, if they can't make it or you can't make it, and you skip an interview and you just say, eh, you know, they're going to come to the Zoom session or eventually talk to them, it uh, doesn't quite work out. That's, this is critical for your relationship with the mentees. And at all costs, avoid the exams. Um, this is our attendance from um, 2022. So the way we do take attendance is we don't do anything. We set up a Google seat at the beginning of the program. And we send out the link. And we say, on the day that you're present, please mark yourself present. Uh, that's how we keep track of how, how we're doing. And as you can see, it uh, does pretty well. Everybody marks themselves present when they're present. And then it slowly dwindles. Somewhere between 2nd July and 16th July, IOE announced the exams. And the attendance just dropped. And by the end of July, we were, we were closed. Uh, the exams are about to finish now. We'll resume next month. Uh, and that was for the mentors. And this is for the mentees. If you are somebody who is inspired by all the numerous impressive speakers here today and just want to get started, or if you're you know, somewhere already started and you're struggling with something and you need help, or anything at all, um, you're just welcome. Uh, come talk to us, tell us what you need, and let's see what we can do about it. So that's my talk. Thank you.